everyone's favorite, Joe Lubin. He's going to talk to us about artificial intelligence, its intersection with blockchain technology. And Joe's going to tell us, you know what, the first billion users of blockchain, yeah, those are humanoids. But get ready, watch out. The billions to come, those ain't going to be humans. The billions of users to come of blockchain technology, it's going to be machines. And one of the key aspects, capabilities of blockchain that is going to be so useful for artificial intelligence, agents, things of this nature, is going to be micropayments. Maybe David Schwartz was on to something with these damn micropayments all along. Maybe ultimately, that will be the big use case for cryptocurrencies. To be honest, Joe says some other stuff in this interview. I don't know what the heck he's talking about, uh, but... Maybe you will understand, and you can let me know down below. Here we go. I was surprised to hear all the VCs in the panel before this uh, um, say that they're going to be straight up crypto forever, um, because I, I'm pretty sure AI is going to permeate uh, everything, and I'm pretty sure they'll make some AI investments, if not uh, hybrid AI crypto investments. 100%. Um, I think uh, AI is going to be great for crypto, and I think uh, crypto is necessary uh, for AI. Um, we have uh, certain groups have the potential uh, to amass talent uh, and data and compute resources um, and build the most powerful centralizing uh, tool on the planet. Uh, and we should probably uh, not let that happen. Um, how? How? Uh, so um, that really is the question. How do you stop this? Because, you know, right now you have these big tech companies. They are amassing so much compute. When you look at OpenAI and Microsoft, these data centers they're building, you're going to own the world with that. You know, you are going to own the most important technology that everything is going to run on. And no one has the money or resources to compete with that. Uh, you know, you will pretty much have the means of production as human labor becomes obsolete Machine labor is all that's really left, isn't it? They already taken most of our manual labor jobs. We're not out there plowing fields. Uh, and as soon as the thinking jobs go, the creative jobs, well, what is really left for us? And so this is problematic with all of that power, um, you know, really centralizing the control of a few. But there's some interesting stuff. Joe will touch on it. But, you know, uh, we look at open source right now. It is quite competitive. They're not that far behind the big models, as you see that uh, evolution taking place. And then when you look at the way the Chinese are uh, approaching this, instead of having these one-shotters, these huge, massive models that just in one shot give you the answer, they do these little agent models where you have much smaller systems but working together, and you have this iterative process where in some ways that's even more profound. So maybe we don't need the biggest and best and hugest data centers. Maybe it will be a decentralized future for AI where you have these very small models, but they work together and the sum of their parts becomes something much bigger. That's what we have to hope for, at least. Uh, at some point in time, as Joe has been known to do, he's going to call for help from his friends from the government. Uh, the government will not be helping here. We just have to hope that a decentralized artificial intelligence future is ultimately more powerful and more valuable than one that's controlled by the few, because that's the way it's playing out right now. Crypto uh, can enable AI uh, to be built uh, using transparent, decentralized governance, um, uh, decentralized compute in different forms, uh, decentralized storage in different forms, uh, sourcing of data, cleaning up of data, uh, creation of, of value systems, uh, staking of um, of assets um, based to sort of guarantee uh, behavior. Uh, so these are uh, sophisticated systems that uh, need to be built out. We, we've built decentralized compute. Uh, um, it's been running for years in, in different forms, but uh, um, we need somehow uh, to motivate um, uh, the builders of big AI, at least uh, to, to make use of, of these technologies. I also think that uh, AI is going to proceed in a pretty decentralized way. Um, I think open source um, is going to 
be very strong. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure the big entities are, are going to do much better uh, than um, you know, smaller models or collections of models uh, that work with one another. Um, I'm essentially a collection of different personas, different intelligences. Uh, this is where it gets weird. This guy kind of goes off the rails here. Where Joe's saying that he is essentially made up of agents, multiple personalities, different AIs. And I guess from a scientific manner, I think that's what he's saying. We all kind of are, in a way, when you get down to it. But I'm not sure where he's going here. Some sort of executor controller uh, that maybe keep, keeps track of, uh, of who should answer a certain question uh, inside my head. Um, and I'm going to add a whole bunch of different AIs. I'm going to have a, an intelligent agent, uh, uh, an ally, and my ally is probably going to uh, coordinate different AIs. Um, those things may not be owned by me. Uh, some of those uh, uh, may require micropayments uh, uh, when they're used. And, and so um, AI is going to benefit our ecosystem because... Um, I've said, uh, as you're aware, I've said in the past that uh, I think the first billion users of uh, of crypto will be human, um, but uh, the the two billionth and three billionth uh, might come pretty soon after, uh, and it's probably going to be uh, machines in different forms. Uh, and so, and this is really interesting if you think about scale, building for scale, and how much usage will these systems need to be able to support. We think about, okay, we have X amount of people and a certain adoption rate, but this can grow in a huge way. Like we don't expect, again, if it's not just people alive and, you know, they figure out how to do blockchain using their, their mobile phones to do their banking and stuff like that. When you start onboarding now, you know, artificial intelligence and computer systems, and they are the users of blockchain. Now you could really see a huge, uh, you know, adoption curve, like nothing we've ever seen before. Blockchain could grow much, much faster here. And I think as you're, you're going forward, you have to look at the future uh, from that lens. And you guys say, well, what might be important? And he just said it right there. Micropayments may be very important, where humans might not mess around with these little tiny itty-bitty payments. you know. But a machine may, and a machine may be able to optimize that where a regular person could not. You start thinking about, well, storage, of course, cloud, decentralized cloud. You start looking at all this functionality, compute, decentralized compute. And you say, okay, to build out the systems of the future in a decentralized manner, knowing that AI is going to be part of this blockchain ecosystem, I think that's how you have to really start layering uh, your, a, uh, your blockchain investments. You know, what are going to be the tools to build that future? And I think that's in a very important lens to kind of look at your portfolio as you go forward. Um, Let's hold that thought. I have yeah. more questions on that. So look, look for a lot of volume uh, in our ecosystem that, that's, uh, you know, perhaps micropayments uh, among machines. Imagine if we already cannot tell whether the volume is real or not, what's going to happen when we have AIs creating artificial volume on all of those exchanges. But back to the point of this tension. I think she just missed the point there. What he's talking about, what I'm talking about, there's nothing, you know, it's not artificial in the sense of these are very real transactions. These are transactions with economic value. It's not like dummy transactions now where someone's just doing wash trading, trying to make a bunch of fake uh, transactions to make a, a coin appear more valuable or an exchange appear to be bigger than it is. No, these are machines that are doing real, you know, economic transactions. And so you have a lot more, but they're not fake by any means. The, so mm -hmm. our, our ecosystem has uh, anti-spam technology because uh, you have to pay for stuff. Uh, so, so the internet uh, pay a lot. Uh, the is just a, a giant cesspool um, because a lot of it's free. But if you produce more than you have to pay, then you have still have an incentive to spam the system. Yeah. So um, I, I think uh, attention systems. Uh, so if some AI wants uh, my attention, uh, that AI can propose to pay me something. Um, if they want me to do some work, they can propose to, to pay me something. 
kind of like he did him. So before we go there, um, I want to come back to the question of the incumbents dominating the AI ecosystem, similar to what we you know, had, had to date with Metaverse. Metaverse is essentially controlled by the big uh, tech companies. He disagrees with that. I disagree. Um, Metaverse is just the future. When, when you look at the best example of Metaverse, it's not Facebook. It's not their stupid little goggles. The best example of the Metaverse is Binance. It's a real company, but it exists pretty much just in the digital realm. It sells digital products. And, you know, Bitcoins or XRP or Ethereum, like there's no tangible asset there they're selling. Everything they have is digital. They uh, exist online, their whole business. They have no real headquarters anywhere. To me, that is the metaverse is you take real business, but it's completely digital in every single way. But those things, those types of businesses, they sure make a lot of real cash or whatever you define value as how would we do we want to convince these large incumbents to decentralize or do we just need to build a force big enough for them to notice and then just take over um i think uh decentralized decentralization is going to proceed naturally and i think it's going to win um i think uh, the ability to establish our own social graphs a bunch of different social graphs for for different purposes uh the ability to add content, uh, pub subsystems, add functional widgets. Um, if all of us are suddenly able to own, control, monetize uh, one or more of our social graphs, um, that's going to be a really powerful force uh, e economically, politically. Um, and I think trillions of dollars of uh, web to social network value is going to get destroyed uh, over the next 10 years or, or so. And uh, um, how many trillions? Uh, well, I, I don't know what the what the social network market cap is. What what is it? Two trillion or three trillion? Who knows? Depends Lots. which companies you you count as a part of it. But yeah, a I couple mean, trillion. So. Um, Weapons of mass manipulation and control, top-down control, um, are profoundly damaging um, human life on this planet, and uh, and so I think people are waking up to that. Um, and if you give people equivalent or better tools um, and enable people to to start living their lives in their own social networks, uh, overlapping social networks, so I'll be connected to yours, you'll be connected to mine. Um, Maybe uh... he's going to go off the rails here. I'm telling you this. If we have to rely on these big, massive tech companies to just out of their good heart, you know, take all this value and distribute it, you know, fairly to the rest of the populace, that ain't going to happen. So, again, we just have to hope that these decentralized systems are more capable over time, that they are more valuable, and they ultimately went out. And it's going to be tough because, again, your big tech companies, they're going to hold all the compute, all the resources, and we have to hope that together, you know, in a decentralized manner, that that actually builds a more capable system. Otherwise, it's like your worst dystopian, you know, sci-fi film in a lot of ways, I think. Um, I'll have a persona, a self-sovereign identity that's the root of one of my social networks, um, and maybe it'll have an NFT container to it, and, and maybe you can lease my nft container or, or pay it something in order to to access my people uh maybe uh you add some content uh, to my network and uh and my ai one of my ai personalities thinks hey that's cool um and tells my nft to give you an nft and to to pay you a little bit and so is it just me or every time this guy is describing a transaction does it sound like he's talking about bribing people? Because that's the way I take everything he's saying. It sounds so shady. I don't know if what he's saying, he means it to sound like that, but it sounds like just some fraud going on to me. I think this is the next social fabric. I think this is the next economy. And uh, um, uh, feels to me, it's certainly uh, centralization and decentralization are are cyclical and countervailing forces, but uh, I think uh, decentralization is going to have some powerful tools soon. 
So what I'm hearing you say is this is a force that's powerful enough that we don't even need to go and convince the Microsoft. Yeah, we should probably try to do that. But um, I think it's dangerous to, to police, um, call it American AI companies, uh, because the opposite is going to happen in other places. Um, some, I think it's amusing and ironic uh, that uh, uh, the Biden executive order leaned into privacy uh, when they're trying to kill privacy in, in our space. Um, and it may be the case that, uh, uh, that um, the threat of AI um, wakes uh, the White House up. So the executive branch has been trying to kill crypto or slow crypto. And uh, fortunately, the judicial branch has, uh, has been helping us out. Um, so AI could drive um, growth of, of our ecosystem. Um, also, as I'm sure we've heard many times today, uh, the, the spot Bitcoin and then Ether ETFs, I think are, are going to draw in so much activity and so much value uh, that the executive branch is not going to be able to um, to continue on its path. Um, you can't stop progress. It doesn't matter if the government likes crypto or not. This is why we always went out because it is the best way uh, to do things. And uh, you know you're not going to be able to call on the government to help because, like he said, in other countries. They're not going to slow down AI in China, um, Russia, any other number of our adversaries. So, again, we just have to hope for a future where a decentralized future is the most efficient and the best future. I believe that to be the case, but we'll have to see things play out. And, of course, we are going against people with unlimited money, uh, unlimited funding, compute, all of that. So we will see how it plays out. Let me know what you think down below. As always, please like, please subscribe. The revolution will be televised right here on Jungle Link.